or nursing is unlike any other kind of nursing. I was a scared little girl. I was in the corner, in the back, not knowing. It's like I forgot all the things like how to move a patient. <laughs> if y'all can teach me how to skip through this whole process, please let me know because it's been brutal. The learning curve is like the steepest experience I've ever felt in my life. Is there a specific personality that would do better in the operating room? Can you go into the operating room straight out of school? Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the long-awaited update on my operating room nursing, I almost said OR, but I realize some people might not know what OR is, but my operating room nursing orientation journey, that is a mouthful. Um, I am almost off of orientation, so in this video I'm going to talk about my background for those of you that may not be aware of my nursing background, the things that have been going pretty great or have gotten better, and the things that are still a little bit challenging or the challenges that I've kind of encountered in my overall experience. And then at the very end, I will be talking a little bit about some tips for those of you that may be considering OR nursing. So if any of that sounds good to you, keep on watching. For those of you that might be new, I have been a nurse for a little bit over a year, which I will be making a video on my first year very soon, but I started in med surge on night shift. I started on the floor. If y'all have been around since the very beginning, y'all know that that was a pretty brutal experience. I have a family, so it just really didn't work with my lifestyle. So thus, I decided to switch over to the OR. With that said, I have been in the operating room for six months. The orientation is six months long, and then I will have an additional three months. So for a total of nine months, I will have buddy call where I'm not taking call by myself. If all of this is gibberish and you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about and you're curious about what I do exactly in the operating room, you can watch this video up here because I made this video about what it is exactly that a circulating nurse does because that's what I am. I'm a circulating nurse in the operating room. There aren't a lot of videos about what a circulating nurse does. So if you're curious, check out that video. So this is kind of it. I am really at the end of my orientation. I am just now transitioning to coming off of orientation. I'm a couple weeks shy of the six month mark, but they have started transitioning me and it's been an experience. <laughs> So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the good parts. So when I first became an OR nurse, I walked in the room, I shadowed, I shadowed during my interview, which was great and everything, but once I started the job, I had to do Periop 101, which was straight torture. Those of you that have done Periop 101, Y'all know. Period up 101, I'm not gonna go through all this. I will link that video. I think it's the first um, video kind of talking about uh, my whole transition into the operating room experience, which is right when I first started. So I will link that video up here for you guys if you guys wanna check it out, because I don't wanna be repetitive because we got a lot to talk about. So when I first started, I did the whole period up 101 thing and a lot of it was, I did a lot of computer stuff. I did a lot of stuff with the educator and then every once in a while I was in and out of the rooms. And I would be in the rooms in OR, in the OR for maybe a day here maybe two days the next week and so on and so forth until I was in it full time once I was done with Periop 101. And I was a scared little girl. I was in the corner, in the back, not knowing. It's like I forgot all the things like how to move a patient. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Going from then until where I am now, it is a world of a difference, and I, for that I'm so grateful because there were some times in there that I was wondering what the hell I was thinking when I switched jobs. True story. Now I am able to really jump in and pretty much do whatever is needed, unless it's some weird positioning that I've never done before, but those are becoming more few and far between. I pretty much have done most of everything at least a couple times. I have found in my own learning experience that repetition is something that is very very helpful for me. You know, in the beginning, someone would show me something and then you're so overwhelmed in the beginning. It's almost like you're just trying to make it through the day. You know what I'm saying? So that was a little bit challenging for me, but it's getting a lot better. Things are getting a lot smoother. I could pretty much, I have actually run rooms by myself for a couple cases. And last week was my first day um, on my own. I still had a resource. So my buddy Michaela was in the room with me and she was really not supposed to do anything more just there in case I needed her type of thing. So I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit scared. There was some pretty quick cases, but sometimes quick cases are You know when you're new and you're kind of freaking out and they're all different cases Just 
the fact that I was on my own <laughs> was just kind of a cluster, you know? I am learning the surgeries a little bit better. One thing that I don't think a lot of the staff realize is that we don't know really any of the surgeries. You don't know how they are, and especially like when you do like robotic surgeries, you don't really know what you're looking at because you have only seen anatomy on like on, in a textbook, you know? So when you see it up on the screen and it's real close up, yeah, I don't know what that is. Is that a gallbladder? Is that an appendix? I don't know. So getting, like I said, a little bit more repetition with the surgeries is, has really been able to help me kind of like know, for example, like a robotic lap coli, like when to turn the lights on, when to switch the monitors. Like it's just, it's getting a lot better, but there's still, there's still room for improvement. Another thing that's been going really well is I've really kind of like felt more um, part of the team. I don't feel as much as an outcast because being a new nurse, you feel a little bit like an outcast. I mean, that's, I don't think that's nursing. That's just new to school, new to, to a new school, any new job, you feel kind of weird. So I have like my homies and my besties and it's really been great because I know that I can go to them and ask them my stupid questions, which no worries you guys, there are no stupid questions. Don't let anybody make you feel stupid about a question because the only stupid question in pretty much everybody's opinion, except maybe the meanies, is, <laughs> Um, the only stupid question is the one the question that you didn't ask I've got my homies that I can go to for those extra special questions <laughs> You know what I'm saying one thing I was a little bit nervous about with transitioning from uh, Being at the bedside to into the into the operating room is I was worried that I was gonna lose that connection with my patients To be able to calm a patient has just been so rewarding for me And even though I don't get to see the patient very long before they go to sleep It's still giving me that fulfillment especially in trauma like situations where things are kind of dire and you you just you have very little time to calm them down but you like let them know that you are there for them you hold their hand and you just reassure them that we're gonna take great care of them that has been important for me and has really helped me enjoy my job so those are kind of all the things that I have improved on I've really come full circle I've come a long way um, I'm sure there are plenty more things to talk about but those are really the things that really stick out in my mind is I'm able to run a room a little bit more smoothly it might not be like you know but a smooth but it's pretty smooth ish like I, I can I shouldn't even say it's smooth like I can fumble my way through it which it's got to count for something <laughs> hey fam how's it going let me know down below something that you were surprised about when you got a new job or something that you really didn't like about getting a new job because I am definitely curious and I would love to see your responses back to the video now I want to take some time and talk about the things that have been a little bit more difficult or the areas that I have a little bit more um, improvement, I need a little more improvement, and or the things that maybe kind of surprised me a little bit. One thing I will say about the operating room is the learning curve is like the steepest experience I've ever felt in my life. When I graduated, I went right to the floor and worked as a bedside nurse. After about four months, it was, it was a very steep learning curve, but after about four months, I felt pretty solid in my role as a bedside nurse and <laughs> I still don't feel as confident now at six months that I did at four months at the bedside and that was something that was really surprising to me. With bedside nursing a lot of people will tell you that after you get past the first year things get a lot easier. I have heard in the operating room that it is more like one to two years. I have heard either one to two or like a solid two years until you feel pretty comfortable. And I think it's because there are so many different procedures, so many different specialties. You'll have four general surgeons that will do the same surgery different. They'll have different positioning. They'll have a different prep. Like it's just these little like subtleties that uh, are different. And it, it takes a long time to learn that. And when you miss something kind of small like that, it's just kind of frustrating. And it can kind of just make you feel a little like eee. That was a really huge surprise surprise to me, especially since I had experience as a nurse. I didn't have a lot of experience, I had about eight months um, on the floor, but still, you know, kind of playing off of that, one thing that I really kind of learned is that you don't know everything. You really don't, and I really kind of, I think all nurses are a little bit type A in the sense that they really like to be prepared for things and they really like to kind of know what they're in for type of thing, and I have really found that in the OR, you kind of have to wing it. Like I said, there's gonna be these little changes, little subtleties, that are gonna be different and 
you might not know that so-and-so likes a certain chair, which I know sounds really silly, but sometimes that'll really piss the surgeon off. I've really just learned that I may be in general for this case, and then I'm gonna hop on over to neuro and I'm gonna do an MSD. Like, you just, you don't know, and it's really just kind of helped me like let go of that control sense. I'm not super comfortable with the letting go part, but I'm getting better. One thing that has been a little bit challenging, which I experienced more in the operating room than I did in, like on the floor, is that some people are not as patient with those that are learning. And sometimes it can be frustrating because people will treat you like you're stupid. And just because you are learning does not mean you are stupid. Like there are, is a really big difference and that can be kind of challenging. It's been a little bit frustrating for me, but you're gonna have that everywhere. But like I said, in my own experience and some people may have this experience on the floor. It's just for me and the, the jobs that I have had, there's nurses, there's techs, there's surgeons, there's anesthesia. So there's a lot more personalities and more to the food chain, I guess, if you will. So maybe it's part of being a little lower on the food chain. I'm not really sure, but have experienced all different types of people being frustrated with my learning process. And you know, it just kind of is what it is. I go into work every single day doing my absolute best and that's really all that you can do. So I just, I just let it go. I'm just like, whatever. If y'all can teach me how to skip through this whole process, please let me know because it's been brutal. One thing that has been kind of challenging for me is the fact that my orientation has kind of been a little bit all over the place. And I understand like it's hard because there are some nurses that are really good teachers. So they try to keep you with the nurses that are really good teachers, so you kind of bounce around a lot, which is kind of challenging when you're trying to learn something, because I'm gonna kind of go back onto the repetition thing. For me, especially, repetition is something that is really helpful for me, and when you do, you know, general for a week, and then you're in neuro for a month, and then you go back to general for a month, and then you are do like, a couple days in ortho, it's just, it can be kind of challenging. And um, I don't know if that's, I mean, that's just kind of the OR. It's just been, uh, it's been a little bit more challenging for my learning style personally. So like I said, just, just rolling with the punches over here. I'm growing. I'm learning all of these things. Like I said, in the positive side of this was the connection with patients. It is more challenging to make that connection with a patient because sometimes I have five minutes with a patient. I go to prep, I interview them. Sometimes you have a little bit more time to talk and then I bring them back and they pretty much go to sleep right away. So I think at the most I've spent with a patient is maybe 15, 20 minutes. It's just a little bit more challenging, but I've just gotten more creative in my connectivity. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, that sounds dumb, but whatever. Now I'd just like to take a little bit of time to kind of talk about just overall how I'm feeling uh, as an operating room nurse. And overall, I absolutely, I love it. And when I have a really great day that I feel like I, it went very smoothly, it's such a great feeling. I feel like that's gonna increase the longer I'm doing this at that one to two year mark, like I said. But honestly, I really love working in the OR. I love all the personalities that I work with. I love learning the new surgeries. I love the trauma. I just, I really overall love being an OR nurse. Like I said, the only thing that was so surprising to me was that transition from being a bedside nurse to an operating room nurse. I feel like I'm coming up on another very big transition going from, you know, being on orientation to being on my own. There's going to be a whole lot of learning there as well, and I'm a little bit nervous about it, but. I feel like it's all gonna be fine. And my friend actually said something, once you realize that the worst thing that a surgeon or whoever is going to do is yell at you, like, I mean, if you wanna yell at me, that's fine. And a lot of the times it's it's not even directed at you, it's just out of frustration at the situation. So that's something that I've had to learn as well, which I'm kind of like that just with the comments on YouTube. I get some really crappy comments on YouTube. I read the book, The Four Agreements, probably two years ago now, and that really kind of helped me understand why people are the way that they are and kind of how to live your life to not let what other people say or do to you affect you because Whenever somebody is negative or rude or whatever, any sort of way towards you, it comes from within them and their perception of you, but that does not necessarily mean that that is your truth. So that is something that I really just kind of carried in my life and I continue to carry in my life because it is so, so true. Because imagine like thinking you're at the, you're having the happiest day of your life. Are you gonna go be mean to somebody? No, like happy people are nice to people and hurt people, hurt people. I don't take it personally. I dealt with the same BS on the floor with the doctors on the floor, so whatever. 
The last thing that I want to talk about is some tips for those of you that may be considering going into the operating room. And the two main questions that I really get is, can you go into the operating room straight out of school? And is there a specific personality that works better in the operating room? So I'm going to talk about, can you go into the operating room straight out of school? You could go into the OR straight out of school, but I don't really recommend it. I actually had the pleasure of kind of starting within about a month of a nurse that came straight out of school and a nurse that had been on an oncology nurse for f over 15 years. So it's kind of nice seeing their perspectives of it. And my friend Michaela was actually able to do her immersion or capstone or whatever you want to call it, her last clinical in the operating room that we work in. So I think that that was super beneficial for her. However, I do think that it would be nice to have that experience as a bedside nurse for the sole fact that once you graduate and you work as a nurse, there is a huge transition because school doesn't really necessarily prepare you to be a nurse. You think that it does, and I'm gonna talk about this in my first year as a nurse video, but it really doesn't prepare you and a lot of your learning and your confidence come from actually working at the bedside. So I think it's really helpful. I, it worries me a little bit if somebody were to go straight from school into the operating room that it would be so overwhelming that they would peace out. We actually had another new nurse who came straight to the OR and she quit shortly after starting just because I think it's so overwhelming and there's kind of a lot to kind of figure out and I just, I really think that it would be nice to kind of get your bearings, you know, get some practice on IVs, you know, work on your critical thinking at the bedside before you come to the OR, but you do you boo. You know, like, I don't wanna, I don't, this is just my opinion. I'm grateful that I spent some time on the floor before I came into the operating room. So there's that. Also the nurse who has been a nurse for, I think, I think 15 years. I'm just throwing that out there, but it's been a really long time. It's been challenging for her as well, just as it has been for me. And she's been a nurse for like way longer than me. So uh, it is a really, really big transition. And that's kind of something else I just wanna prepare people who are considering the operating room is you don't really learn about the OR in nursing school. You learn about malignant hyperthermia and that's it. <laughs> Let me know down below if you learned anything about the operating room in school because I'm sure I did, but it's not coming to me right now. <laughs> the next thing that I want to talk about is, is there a specific personality that would do better in the operating room? And in my opinion, have to say yes. The operating room comes with a lot of really strong personalities because we are working in such a critical type area in a sense that you have to be able to advocate for your patient at any moment um, with people that have higher degrees than you. And no, it shouldn't matter that you have doctors and anesthesiologists and CRNAs, but unfortunately there is that type of stigma and with that you have to kind of be a strong personality. I don't know if it just takes that type of person to be in the OR but there are a lot of really strong personalities and very few timid personalities. However, there are people that are a little bit more introverted. I can think of a handful of people that I work with that are more introverted so like I said, you do you boo. It's just I had a friend interview in the OR and I kind of told her the good and the bad and one of the things was that you have to be okay with being yelled at for something that has nothing to do with you just because sometimes in a high, like high stress situation, it's like I said, it's not you, it's me type of thing. Like, but the other way around, like it's not me, it's you, whatever. Anyway, so that just keep that in mind that you can't be offended easily. You can't be one to go home and ruminate on, you know, something that somebody said to you in the heat of the moment. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. And then another thing is just be prepared for a huge learning curve, whether you are a veteran nurse or you're a brand new nurse, it's steep. It's just steep and if you're willing to kind of learn how to go with the flow and you're up to the challenge, come and join us because it's a good time. I have a good time. I love working in the OR like I said. So if you like to have a good time, you should apply. And kind of just going off of that, OR nursing is unlike any other kind of nursing. You are dealing more with kind of positioning and equipment and beds and you're kind of like a circulating nurse kind of runs around like a chicken with their head cut off getting the things that are needed for those on the sterile field so it is completely unlike any other nursing. So if that sounds good to you, maybe the OR is for you but it is, I don't even carry, I don't even wear a stethoscope which was really like it made me a little sad <laughs> and I actually had a dream that I floated to a different unit and I was excited to assess patients. Um, I do miss that, I do miss assessing patients uh, but I also really do enjoy my job. So. I hope this was all very helpful for you guys and I just kind of want to share you know, an honest picture of my journey as an operating room nurse. Like I said, I love it. I have my good days and I have my bad days. That's just, that's nursing, that's life, that's any job. 
really, if you think about it. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, make sure those notifications are on so you don't miss any other videos. And let me know down below what you do for work, whether it's nursing, you're, cause I know some people don't even, aren't even nurses and they watch my videos. So I'm just curious, like what do you do for a living? Whether you're a stay at home mom or whatevs, let me know. So I will catch you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching, washing. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. All right, all right, all right. I wish you guys could see I have like one leg hiked up like Captain Morgan. This is Frankie. He says hello. Okay.